what is up you guys welcome back to my channel so i am looking a little rough this morning um i just got done wiping my face i was what well, to start off with <laughs> as you can see by the title this is going to be my labor and delivery story i am one week postpartum well one week and a few days you guys can hear the little baby in the background he shouldn't be waking up. I can use already fed and change, but he's a little crybaby, so he might be waking up. Um, I don't even know how to start this video. My eyes are really, really wet. I have not been sleeping well for the past week. Um, so, Corona, so, Corona. so I'm just gonna start off where I left off. Um, no voy a hablar muy fuerte because I don't wanna wake up the baby. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start off where I left off. Um, I remember that I, the last video that I filmed was, last video that I filmed, I remember that it was, um, a Monday, I believe, or no, a Tuesday. I had my appointment on a Tuesday, and, um, it's crazy, guys, because I was supposed to be getting induced the 18th. No, I'm sorry. I was that was my delivery, my due date, the 18th. But they wanted to. Um, I was scheduled an induction for the 15th. Uh, he's really he was really tiny. Uh, he only weighed six pounds, twelve ounces. My other little boy, Josue, he weighed a pound more than him. Um, so like I said, my appointment was. Um, it was supposed to be on a Friday when I was scheduled, but uh, since like Monday, I started having um, what I thought were breaths and hits. Um, si andaba para arriba y para abajo, I was going to appointments, I was just walking a lot, being very active. Um, so maybe I thought it was due to that. Um, Tuesday, también, same thing, and on Tuesday, uh, I had um, my last ultrasound, and I also had it to go for baby monitoring. And when they monitored my baby, me dijeron que I was getting contractions. Um, she said, do you feel them? And all I could feel was honestly uh, my back. Uh, se me ponía así como, como, I just had cramping, you know, like, I don't know how to explain it, pero it was just like this tight feeling in my lower back and I didn't pay much attention to it but it was uncomfortable um whole time I thought they were just breaks and hicks so that happened on Tuesday ya para el miércoles um desperté en la mañana and I was still getting this um pain like no cada ratito but it was most definitely like every hour I would get um like just this cramping in my lower back so uh, Wednesday, I woke up early with my husband like at 7 a.m. before he went to work and we walked for like 30 minutes um, all around. Whole time, uh, my doctor's appointments, they never checked my cervix, they never checked if I was dilating, they never checked anything. So I was like, pues, if they're not worried, I mean, I am getting my ultrasounds to get checked if my cervix is has shortened out or thinned out. Um, and everything seemed good, so that's why I never asked the doctor to check my cervix or to check, I mean, not, not my cervix, not my cervix, but to check if I was actually dilating. Nunca le dije nada. Um, I assumed everything was good. So, como les digo, el, se llega el miércoles, and um, I started getting this pain. It was me by myself at the house, and my husband was like, should I go to work? Because it was like literally two days before my induction. And I told Ro how with my, uh, with Josue, I was scheduled an induction and literally a day before I was uh, scheduled my induction, I had my baby, like my water broke. Um, well, I started breaking slowly. It's completely different from this experience. Uh, maybe I'll do like a comparison video later on, uh, comparando mis dos embarazos. But this one was definitely very fast and it was just very fast. I don't give a whole like I was in the hospital for four days, literally. Um, and it took me a good, I would say like 16 hours of labor. Um, but anyways, so Wednesday, it was only me and Josue. Uh, 
fue and my husband se fue para el trabajo todo normal um, I took a little nap and I literally woke up from my nap nauseous AF um, keep in mind I couldn't eat anything all day so since very early in the morning all I had was a humix because I used to love humix when I was pregnant with this little boy um, so I had a humix I threw up um, I had what else did I have I think I had some toast that day I threw that up too um, so everything just started really bad in the morning um, no paraba de vomitar, even water I would throw up so then se dieron como las 12 de la tarde and I got hungry so I ate I threw that up too and at that point I was sweating like I was sweating really bad but I was cold like I was feeling really cold and I was sweating and I remember that my doctor told me that if I couldn't feel my baby um, kicking more than 10 times in an hour that I should um, call in and at that point at that point I was really worried because I was throwing up everything and I could feel the baby kick but he wasn't really as active so I got worried y le di mando mensaje a mi esposo just to be sure I told him that I wanted to go to the hospital now never throughout my whole pregnancy never had I gone to the hospital por cualquier cosita because I'm throwing up because this and that because at the end of the day I do know that it's pregnancy no va a ser todo color de rosas so um yeah i called my husband i'm like you know what this is serious uh you know that for me to actually want to go to the hospital i have to be literally feeling like i'm dying so um vente para acá, you know so he told his boss that i was gonna go to the hospital because i thought i was in labor and um yeah se vino para la casa i did not have my hospital bag ready i thought that i still had two days to go we were planning on doing everything the next day um arreglar todo la bolsa you know like there were still videos that i was planning on getting up like the day before i was planning to film what's in my hospital bag what's in my baby hospital bag what am i taking with me but none of that happened so my husband comes back from work um he gets to the house like at around two to something um at that point i'm just laying there um i'm telling Josué to get ready and I'm just laying there. He gets home. Um, le ha listado la mochila de, de ropa a mi niño, por lo que se va a llevar con mis papás, because we still had to go drop him off at my parents. Um, and it's like a 45 minute drive. So I was not feeling good. My husband no había comido en todo el día también, so we had to stop to get him some food. I was not hungry. It was already like 3 p.m. I wasn't hungry. Después en lo que fuimos a comprar de comer, and lo que mi esposo comió, the drive from my parents' house to the hospital that I delivered is literally like another 45 minutes. We ended up getting there like at around 7. Um, we got there like at around 7. We checked in. I told them how I was feeling. Me dijeron that if I wasn't dilated, uh, that they wouldn't be able to keep me in. They asked me if I, I knew how much I was dilated. Y como les mencioné hace rato, Nunca me habían chequeado, so I didn't know if I was even dilated. So they checked me, um, and I'm two centimeters dilated already. Um, by that time, it was already 8 p.m. Um, and they told me that they weren't going to check me right in, like, no me van a hacer check in um, right away until they saw that I was actually progressing um, within, like, every half hour if I was progressing or sino cada hora if I was dilating no me iban a querer mandar para la casa so I was two centimeters dilated by eight they my nurse her name was Corey um and she works at St. Francis Hospital in Olympia Fields she is amazing she was my nurse the whole time I was blessed to have that nurse honestly um I'm a very nervous person and I I don't know I'm just a very nervous person and I feel like I don't need help when I actually do and she was just really amazing she didn't ask me if I needed help she just came to me directly and she didn't even ask for like if I needed help she just came and gave me the help and I feel like that's how it's supposed to be she was amazing um but anyways my nurse Corey she asked me to walk around I walked around for 30 minutes I've been walking around for like 30 minutes 
um, it was a little square and in every corner I would do five squats. I did that for 30 minutes straight walking around every corner doing five squats. I will not every um, every round, every other round I would just do uh, five squats. Um, so at 8.30 So at 8.30, um, they checked me, uh, and depending if I had dilated or not, they were going to keep me. So she checked me, and I was already 3 centimeters dilated in half an hour. As soon as she saw that, she said that she was going to go talk to the doctor that was going to uh, be delivering my baby. And he came in, he checked me, he said, yes, we're going to keep you, we're going to go ahead and check you in. Um, and that's basically that's when everything just started um, they gave me orange juice they gave me some salty crackers just so I could have something in my stomach um, my nurse saw that I threw that up too uh, so at that point she just told me that it was just the hormones because the baby was ready to come so it was just all my hormones um, they did it gave me they did give me sofren uh, for nausea um, y pues sí, fue todo, sí se me calmó la, la nausea un poquito. Um, so by 10 p.m., by 10 p.m., that's when it all started. Um, I got put on Pitocin and I got my epidural. Now the epidural was given to me. Um, honestly, at that point, I just wanted to have my baby because I was not feeling good. I was so hot, I was sweating so much. I was feeling nauseous. Um, even after they gave me the Zofran, like it did work, but yeah, después, like in like two hours, I was feeling nauseous again and I didn't want to take another fucking pill, another fucking pill. Um, so I just, I mean, see, it's normal if it's hormones, I just fucking, I womaned up and I fucking took it. Um, pero it was rough. So at that point, me dijeron, uh, you know what, we're going to put you on Pitocin. Basically what Pitocin does is um, it helps you contract. So the reason why they wanted to give me the epidural was because they were going to, o sea, las contracciones iban a ir de cero a cien in a period of like an hour or two. And that was going to make me um, dilate uh, because obviously the contractions uh, were going to be strong as fuck. And they didn't want me feeling all that pain. So they put my epidural in like at around 1130. Um, and they had already started Pitocin. So I was getting light contractions. Um, but as soon as I got the epidural, she boosted up the uh, Pitocin level. Uh, and that's when the fucking contractions started coming. I could not feel shit. I was numb. And so see, um, here's a little tip if you get your epidural just try to lay straight flat um my epidural was working on one side better than the other one it was working better on my right side and i could feel my left leg like completely um so i was being tossed and turned around so se me pasó el tiempo super rapido by 5 p.m 5 49 my baby boy was born so let's say from 12 to 5, um, everything was going good. I couldn't feel contractions, nothing. I think it started like at 5, 5 a.m. That's when it fucking hit. Like, bitch, it fucking hit. Um, we had a little bit of a of a little, a little stressful moment. I don't even know what the fuck to call it. Um, I just remember getting like una corriente bien fuerte de just fucking contractions, bitch. Like, I could feel everything and i told my nurse like i could feel it and she said do you feel pressure and i was like no it's painful like it hurts and i feel pressure like i need to poop i told her i need to poop that's what i told her she said no that's the baby she checked me and literally the baby's head was right there let me tell y'all that the most stressful shit happened to me i don't want like si esto no es tener los, ne los nervios al cien i don't know what the fuck is so I was about to pop my baby out and there was no doctor around. All doctors were ocupados delivering other babies. So my nurse was literally on the radio trying to find a doctor from another department para que viniera and deliver my baby because she was the only nurse there. I don't know if they're not prepared to deliver babies, but I was about to tell her like, girl, you better, you better sit over there and 
grab my baby because I literally felt like I was gonna pop this baby out. I could feel everything, like everything. It was a completely different experience from Josue's. Um, from nurse was literally desesperada, just on the radio, just um, trying to contact the doctor. I kid you not. Le estuvo fregando a, a mi doctor um, que llegara like five times throughout those 15 minutes, like just paging him and paging him and paging him. Um, like, are you almost done? She's gonna have her baby. I need another hand of nurses here. Well, by like 5.30, entraron two nurses, um, two more nurses, and they were just there. And I, I kept on telling them I need to push. Corey, she was amazing. Um, I told her, like, in ese momento, honestly, you feel a little, I don't they know, but I have, but you literally feel like you're gonna fucking die on that bed. Um, it's really fucking painful. Um, but she was amazing. She was very supportive. Um, she was trying to get me not to push. And honestly, I feel que si no hubiera de haber sido por ella, just like holding my hand. She, she told me, like, me estaba diciendo, hold my hand, apriétame la mano, do what you gotta do, but don't push. I was feeling my baby's head, like, right there. And imagine not being able to push, just holding it while getting fucking contractions. The baby was ready to come out, but como digo, no había doctores alrededor, so... And I remember, um... And then it got to the point where, um... One of the nurses that had came in, um, she was about to deliver my baby. Uh, she wasn't a doctor, she was a nurse. And I didn't care, I didn't give a fuck if she was ready or not, or licensed or not, like, bitch, just catch my baby. <laughs> um, when I was about to push, uh, entra el doctor. I'm sorry if the angle is off, uh, my phone is about to turn off. I literally have like 10 minutes to talk before it powers off. Um, and the angle is kind of messed up. But, when I was literally about to push, entró el doctor. Um, entró el doctor and he like immediately just put on the fucking glove y se sentó and I was just ready. I pushed, I don't know, I, I really don't know, like I don't even think it was a minute because like I said, the baby's head ya estaba ahí and um, I was just waiting to get another contraction to push and on the first, um, like on the first set of, of pushes, I pushed him out. Um, so no sé decirles like cuantos minutos duré because honestly it's like okay you're supposed to like hold your breath in and count they count to ten um i remember they got to like what six like one two three four five six and i pushed the baby out so it was a very quick experience i did get a secondary tear it's not as painful as it was with josue i'm not sure why um but basically the tear that josue had done Este bebé me lo volvió a abrir and I had to get stitches. Um, it was just a very intimate moment, very, I don't know, very surreal experience. Um, just feeling everything, being awake through it all. Um, and I say this just because, like I said, with my son Josue, it was a very rough experience. Everything is blurry up to this day. I, I don't. I can't recall certain events that my mom says that happened because she was there with me so I don't remember. It was a very traumatizing experience. I feel like that's why I was also scared to go into labor with this baby. Um, but honestly, it was a piece of cake. I told my husband I'll do this a hundred times more. I'm just kidding. Um, but the hardest part most definitely was the whole pregnancy. All the way from my first trimester to the third i threw up more than ever that last day that i was gonna have my baby um so it was really rough um that is how it all went down basically um i don't know if i'm missing anything else i'm pretty sure i'm not real my husband was there with me the whole time uh, igual me estaba dando muchos ánimos. He was right next to me. Um, he saw when his baby was born. He saw his little head come out. He saw everything. <gasps> que me amores. Que mi corazón hermoso. 
If you guys want to see more of the baby, go ahead and follow me on Snapchat. Aquí está, aquí les dejo mi Snapchat. I'm literally, my Snapchat is literally taken over by this little boy because that's all I post. And if you guys are coming from Snapchat, through Snapchat, then you guys know. Um, this video is honestly one week late. Uh, like I said, he was born June 11th and it is one week delayed because honestly just getting um used to this whole new baby routine is so hard just getting the routine down is hard because you don't know what to expect no sabes si tu bebé te va a salir un bebé bueno que te va like no bueno you know pero que no va a ser la cosa en la noche o un bebé que is gonna be crying all day like you never know um luckily my baby doesn't cry en el día, no es como que lo dejo llorar y no, porque nada más oigo que puja y ahí voy luego, luego a macargarlo. Um, but que sea, like, que esté despierto, que esté llorando en el día, honestly, no. When he's more awake is at night time. Pero no, no llora, he's just awake. Y me da cosa dejarlo solito, you know, like, just awake. So usually I'm awake with him. Um, I feed him, I change him, then we're awake for like an hour, I guess, or sometimes even more um, because he just sleeps in el día y le gusta estar despierto en la noche and that's literally how it used to be when I was pregnant. I even told my husband, vas a ver que este niño cuando nazca, he's gonna be sleeping all damn day and he's gonna be awake all damn night. Like I siempre sentía a las 3, 2, 3 de la mañana his kicks, his stretches, like, oh, you're the boy. You're just waking up when mama is about to go to sleep. Um, but that's literally life right now. I'm enjoying my baby as much as I can. Um, appointments are great. I'm okay. Everything went very well. Um, I'm so blessed to have this little baby with me. I'm so happy. Lo estamos disfrutando todo lo que podemos. And just, I'm just blessed to to have been to have been able to carry this little baby inside my stomach to have him here with me sanito y pues sí todo bien so you guys will get to meet him on my next video um remember how i told you guys i had a hell of freaking heartburn look at this little baby's hair ay parece un ratoncito mis amores Look at this baby's head. Llena de pelito. That's why I have so much fucking heartburn. So much. So much heartburn, my amor. And his name, my little baby's name, is Raul Liam Corona Jr. So he is a junior. Um, his dad's name is Raul. And I picked out Liam because Liam is so adorable. And actually, my brother Noe, he was the one who picked it out. But I made it official because I like that name. Um, my mom made you ideas, my other brothers gave me ideas, but Noe. But that is it. I appreciate every single one of you guys that watches my videos. Thank you guys for the support. And we will see you guys on my next video.